morning, Year Three. Welcome to Wednesday's lesson. Hope you're well. Um, we are going to be looking today at multiplying a one-digit number and a multiple of ten. And that sounds like something that you'll all be able to do by the end of the lesson. But first of all, we need to know what is a multiple of ten. Hmm. I bet you're all thinking. Well, I think I know. We'll have a look at the numbers on here. We've got 16, 70, and 43. Which one of those is a multiple of 10? What do you think? Well, hopefully, you're all shouting out and saying that 70 is a multiple of 10. How do we know that? Well, first of all, we know it because if we count in 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Okay, we know that because it's in our 10 times table and we can get there quite quickly. But what do we know about numbers in our 10 times table and the digits in our place value? What do we know about them? Well, hopefully, you're always shouting that if it ends in a zero, it is in the 10 times table. So I could give you a number such as. Forty-seven thousand nine hundred and forty. Straight away, you can tell me if that's a multiple of ten because it has a zero. So it doesn't matter how many digits are in that number. It doesn't matter how big that number is. If it's a whole number and it ends in a zero, you can tell me straight away that it is a multiple of ten. And it means that something has been times by multiplied by 10 to get that number. You can get that number by multiplying by 10. And that's really important that we know how to spot a multiple of 10. So let's have a look on here, shall we? So as I said, our learning objective is today is to multiply a one-digit number by multiple of 10 okay and you might want to prove your answer using manipulatives especially if you're in the classroom it's a bit trickier when we're at home but we can go back to when we were doing exchanging with our addiction okay number facts are really going to help you with this so knowing those multiplications and those number facts to solve calculations and also that you know about place value so this goes back to Tuesday's lesson, to yesterday's lesson, about place value and understanding what those digits mean and eat the value of each digit. So what have we got here? Yes, three. We've got an array. And what does the array show us? I want you to write down the two arrays that we are looking at here. So hopefully, you can spot we've got three times five times three okay we can make five groups five equal groups and they have each got three counters in them each counter is worth one and that is really important for later on if we've got five times three equals 15 what other array have we got here We've also got three times five because we've got three groups and each of those groups have got five counters in. So we know that not only does five times three equal 15, we know that three times five equals 15. So what about this array? What have we got here? Well, straight away, something's changed, hasn't it? Straight away, our counters have a different value. What is the value of each counter? Our counters are now worth 10. Okay. So what are the two arrays that we could have here? Well, we could have five groups, and each group has got 30 because we've got 10, 20, 30. 
because we've made our three ten times bigger, what do you also notice about our answer? Our answer is ten times bigger, isn't it? We've got five groups, and they've each got thirty in them. So if we were doing repeated addition, we would have five groups. We would have thirty. The 30, the 30, the 30, the 30. Okay, that is exactly the same. Or 30, the 30, the 30, the 30. Can you see down in the bottom? The 30. Okay, remember. Multiplication is the same as repeated addition. But here, we've got 5 times 30. We've made the 30 10 times bigger. 30 is a multiple, isn't it? We've multiplied that 3 10 times to get 30. And because that 30 is a multiple of 10, our answer is also a multiple. So now we've got 30 time, 5 times 30 equals 150. What would our other array be? Write it down. What would the other array be? We've got three lots, three groups, three equal amounts, but now We've got 50 in each, haven't we? We've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So if we were doing it as repeated addition, we now have 50 plus 50 plus 50. We now have 50 plus another 50 plus another 50. Okay. The deans have moved from 1 to 10 each time. They are also multiples of 10. Okay. And because we have made one of our digits 10 times bigger, our answer also becomes 10 times bigger because it's a multiple of 10. Okay, what have we got here? We've got some deans now. Each of those deans is worth how much? Each of those deans is one. So if we were thinking in an array, how many have we got in one array? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got how many groups? One, two, three. And we've got seven in each group. So what is our answer? How many have we got all together? So you could do three times seven. What would be the other multiplication that you could do if you weren't too sure of your seven times table? You could do seven times three. Okay, that might be a bit easier for you than three times seven. So what is seven times three or three times seven? It's 21, isn't it? Yeah, three lots of seven or seven lots of three are 21. If we weren't sure, you could count them all up. Okay, but we're getting quite good at our seven, our three times table because we're practicing lots on TT Rockstars. So we're doing quite well, aren't we? So we've still got three groups here. We've got one, two, three. But how many have we got in each group? We've got 70, haven't we? We've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. That has been made 10 times bigger. So if we know that 3 times 7 equals 21, and we're making something 10 times bigger, 
what is our answer going to be? It's going to be 210, isn't it? Because we've made our 70 10 times bigger. Okay, it is now a multiple of 10. So whatever our question is a multiple of 10, we need to make our answer a multiple of 10, don't we as well? Because that's not a multiple of 10. We need to times it by 10. So what we've actually done is we've taken our three times seven, which is 21, and we've made it 10 times bigger, just like we did yesterday. So it's almost like a two-step problem, isn't it? Because we have three times seven equals 21. So if we place that in our hundreds, uh, our face value, okay, we would put our two because it's a 10, we put our one there. Okay, that's what we've got there, isn't it? But we're now going to do three times 70. Now, rather than writing something down or getting 70 lots of Ds, we've multiplied something in that question by 10. So because we've multiplied the 7 by 10, we now need to multiply our answer by 10. So 1 times 10 is 10. I can't put my 10 in the 1 column, so where does it go? into the tens column. What goes in my ones column? Nothing? Don't put anything there? No, it's a zero, isn't it? Okay, and then I times my 20, my two tens, I multiply that by 10, and I've got 210. So it's very similar to the work that we were doing yesterday. But it's understanding how the 3 times 7 can help us to do 3 times 70. It's understanding those number facts and understanding what you have done to get to that place. Okay, and why is 21 the answer to this? And why is 210 the answer to this? I feel like a bit like a weatherman today, looking at things that because in, in my screen they're off. So it's a bit confusing. Anyway, so it's about understanding how we can use our knowledge here to help us with our answer here. Okay. Okay, another one for you. I want you to really have a go at this one on your own and then we will talk through it. Really have a go. See, take this as an additional practice one. Have a go at this one. So what is this array showing us? Well, it's got one, two, three, four, five groups, or it's got one, two, three, four groups. Doesn't matter which way round you've done it, does it? Whichever you see first is absolutely fine. We'll go horizontally. So it's got one, two, three, four, five. And how many are in each group? One, two, three, four. So we have got five times four. Oh, okay, I need to know, be good at my four times table now, don't I? So I've got four, eight, 12, 16, 20. Five times four is 20. So if I know that five times four is 20, what have I got over on this side? Well, I still got one, two, three, four, five. I've still got five groups, but how much is each of those groups worth now? I've got five groups, but in every single one, I've got 10, 20, 30, 40. I've multiplied that group by 10 already, haven't I? It's 
10 times bigger than this group. This array, if we had arrays here, would be 10 times greater than this array. So what is my multiplication going to be? So I had five times four, and we've already said that equals 20. What would my, my multiplication number sentence be? So I had five times 40. I've now got a multiple of 10 there, haven't I? 40 is my multiple of 10. So if we were going to count all of those arrays, which is going to be a little bit tricky, and it's going to take a while. But let's use what we already know. We know that five times four is 20. We've made our one 10 times bigger. So we now have five times 40 is 200. Let's prove that. 100, 10, and 1. Okay. Originally, we had 5 times 4 is 20. By proving that, 0 times 10, okay, because we're making it 10 times bigger. 40 is 10 times bigger than 4. Okay. Two, lots of 10, okay? So 20 times 10 is 200, okay? It is 10 times larger. 10 times larger than 10 is 100. I put in my placeholder, okay? We have proved that 200 is 10 times larger than 20. So we know that five times 40, because we are doing 40, plus 40, plus 40, plus 40, plus 40, okay? We are just doing repeated addition, okay? But we can move on from writing that down, because once we get into bigger numbers, we'll be using our whole math page to help us, okay? So we can use what we know and see that that is 10 times bigger to help us to use those known number facts. Okay. Right, here is your practice it. First of all, I want you to tell me what that picture shows. What does it show? We know because it's Numicon that each of these holes is worth what? One. So once you've done that, what that represents in your number sentence, if each hole was worth 10, what would your number sentence be and what would your answer be? Have a go. So what have you written for your three? Hopefully, you can see that you have got one, two, three, four, five Numicon pieces. You have got five Numicon pieces. And that was the Numicon piece that represented five. So you have got five um. times five, which is what? 25, well done. But what if each of those pieces was now worth 10 rather than one? Each of those holes was worth one. How many pieces would you have? You would still have five pieces. Okay. But one of those pieces would now be worth what? Oops, let's just go back. Okay, if each of these pieces was worth 10, one piece would be worth 10, 20, 
30, 40, 50. So we would now have five times 50. Now, can you see what the answer would be just by looking at your original answer? If you're not sure, you've got a multiple of 10 here. So because this is 10 times bigger, our answer also needs to be 10 times bigger, 10 times greater. Okay, hopefully you can see that 10 times greater than 25 is 250. Let's just use our 100 uh, place value to check that we are correct. 10, uh, 5 times 10, oh, 10 times 5, 5 times 10 is what? 50. Twenty, two lots of, 20 times 10 is 200. Okay, so you can see that we have proved it with our place value. Okay, but if you can start seeing how those two answers link to each other, then that's a really good thing. You've really reached our objective today. Okay, so here is your do it. It is giving you exactly the same that we have done on here. Okay, if I know, then I know. Okay, so that is your do it for today. The answers are on the web page for you. Here at the bottom, oh, it's written slightly differently, but remember that equal sign just means that the two sides of the clock calculation are balanced. That's all it means. So that is your do it for today. You've then got to secure it. We're not too sure whether Whitney is correct or not. Okay, you need to say explaining whether she is correct or incorrect. And if you get onto it, there is a deep in it. And the deep in it is always, sometimes, or never true. Okay, it says the product of a one digit number and a multiple of 10 has one zero and two other digits. Now, there's some language in there that you might have to dig back into your filing cabinet to find. What does the word product mean? Okay. Is it always true? Is it sometimes true? Or is it never true? Okay. That is your map for today. As I said, year three. Okay. It's all about being able to recognize if I know this, then I know this. Okay, and it's all about understanding what happens when you add when it's got a multiple in and how that changes your answer. Okay, so answers are on the website for you today. Any questions or any issues, then please email us in. But hopefully, you'll be feeling really confident with this after today, and I shall speak to you tomorrow.